So the shear stress at any point is given by the shear force at that section multiplied by area multiplied by y bar divided by i divided by b. So here a into y is basically representing, suppose you are given any section like this one, any section is given and your neutral axis is somewhere here and we want to know what is the shear stress for this what is the shear stress on this line which is the distance of y so you have to consider this entire area so in this equation this one is area a for this area you have to find out centroid so this one is centroid and you have to mark this distance from here which will be called as y bar for this section and what section you are taking that width at that point that equals to width B. If section is changed, if the section is changed, suppose your section will be here somewhere, that is here, will the width will change, area will change, Y bar will change. What about the top point? Area is zero. So what is the shear stress at the top? It will be zero. And what about the on neutral axis? Is the area is maximum either from top side or from bottom side? Is it correct? So shear stress is maximum on which side at neutral axis and the shear stress is uh, zero value on outer fiber. Whereas for bending stress, the bending stress is maximum on outer fiber and is the least value on the neutral axis. All of you are familiar with this? So if we apply the same concept here, then is the shear stress is zero on this point and is the shear stress is zero on this point. When we consider only flange, that is this one, so you have to consider this area, this is the centroid, major distance of this point with this one, that is neutral axis, that will be your y bar and you can calculate that value, it will be parabolic in nature. But when you are talking about the flange, you have to take this width that equals to B1. But as soon as you cross this flange and you are in the wave and you are at the top of the wave, that time your thickness has been changed. So this will be, will be equal equals to B2. So B2 will be less than B1 and B is in denominator. So this value will shoot up. And then when you come to the neutral axis, it will again increases and finally it will close down. So value will be max at this point. Value at this point will be tau 2 equals to V multiplied by A multiplied by Y bar, no change for Y bar, multiplied by I but B2. Whereas value for this one is tau 1 if I say is equals to V multiplied by A multiplied by Y bar divided by I multiplied by B1. So there is a slight difference in two calculations and since B1 is more as compared to B2, so tau1 will be less than tau2. But this uh, difference is taking place just between a very small gap, so it almost remains horizontal line. Tau1 will be at this point whereas tau2 will be on website. This tau1 is on the bottom of flange whereas tau2 is top of the wave. Suppose I know the value of tau1, am I able to calculate the value of tau2? Is tau1 by tau2, what is tau1 by tau2? Is it B2 by B1? So they can ask you one simple question based on this. That is tau1 by tau2 equal to B2 by B1. And this is always, B2 by B1 is always greater than 1. It's a tau2 
will be equals to tau 2 will be equals to b1 divided by b2 multiplied by tau 1 so tau 2 is always greater than tau 1 so this is a distribution of a rectangular section we consider this section y so anything above y that is hatch here and let the g of this the g the centroid of this one with a distance of y bar the beam has a width equal to b and depth equal to d so this small portion will have height equals to d by 2 minus y so how much is above the neutral axis is it a y plus what is the yg uh, what is y bar is it y plus this value divided by 2 is it correct this value is a is a rectangle so this one is a height height divided by 2 plus y bar will be the centroid so that is y plus 1 by 2 d by 2 minus y so that will be equals to 1 by 2 y plus d by 2 if you solve this and the area of this shaded region is b that is the width of this one and height is d by 2 minus y so we have a shear stress tau equals to v times a times y bar upon i b if you substitute all those things we will get v upon 2 i d square by 4 which is constant value and minus y square so y is variable so is it a parabola is it correct and is it a leftward parabola minus y square is leftward y square is rightward so that is why the distribution will be like this and naturally the distribution the you can find out the maximum value from this if you want to find out any time maximum differentiate equate to zero is it correct so if you differentiate d tau by dy will you get a condition for maxima and if you get a condition for maxima what we get v upon 2i multiplied by d square what is the derivative of this one zero no zero v by 2i cannot be zero so 2i must equal to zero that is at y is equal to zero the shear stress is max agree so in any mathematics so this one is a distribution of a velocity in a circular section that is in fluid mechanics so is this distribution is also is this distribution is also similar type recall that value we have a same distribution of velocity velocity what is the velocity on the boundary is always equal to zero because the shear stress is max and remember i put y is equal to zero in this equation why i have put y equal to zero because it gives me du by dy equal to zero then one by four mu cannot be zero then minus dp by dx cannot be zero this is two r this is zero r is constant so what you get only two y that is minus two y is equal to zero so y is equal to zero so if you put y is equal to zero then you will get u max and recall that u max you have got is 1 by 8 mu then uh, 1 by 4 mu minus dp by dx into r square and you want to calculate u bar then we have used the rolls theorem remember rolls theorem so rolls theorem is something like this that is u multiplied by da over the entire integral equals to what da and if you recall that value will be equals to 1 by 8 mu minus dp by dx times r square and that is why u max upon u bar will be always equals to 2 now this is true for fluid mechanics then this one is true for here also correct so okay forget about this part huh? this is fluid mechanics so i is equal to bd cube by 12 so if you substitute we'll get 3 by 2 v by bd is bd is the entire area of this one force is acting like this one so what will happen the v divided by bd is it called as average whenever you take complete area it is an average term so this is 3 by 2 of average so you have to remember the equation that tau max is always equals to 1.5 of tau average then you do the step number one first of all you will calculate area so area equals to b multiplied by d then calculate tau average tau average will be equals to v divided by area and then calculate tau max 
So tau max will be equals to 1.5 of tau average. Never give the answer for tau average. Always give the answer for tau max. Similar way we can do for triangular also. So for triangular section we have taken the B as a width, H as a height and uh, neutral axis at this point is the neutral axis from the bottom is H by 3 or 2 H by 3, H by 3. So what I have done is that I have taken this as the reference. So from this reference this is H by 3 so this is 2 H by 3. Okay. So if this is the neutral axis at any distance Y this value is 2 h by 3 and this one is y so y this one is y is taken from this side so what is the centroid from the top side is it 2 by 3 y all calculation is done from the apex so as far as apex is considered with the centroid is it 2 by 3 y and what is the area of this figure is it b dash multiplied by y divided by 2 you have to develop one relation here for B dash that you can develop from similar triangle and you get B dash equals to B by H into Y. Then calculate the area, then calculate centroid, substitute in the value of tau and you get tau is equal to this equation. Now this equation, if you allow this Y to be multiplied inside, is it Y times H minus Y square? So Y square, is it again negative parabola? You multiply this y inside, you will get hy and this is minus y square. So that is negative parabola. So you will get a parabola like this. Now see here, what I am quoting is that previously, that the shear stress is maximum neutral axis. This is not true for triangle. In the case of triangle, if you just, if you differentiate this equation with respect to y, you will not get the value of y equal to h by 3. That is the problem. So the maximum shear stress will come exactly at y equal to h by 2. That is from the top side. So same is true from bottom side also. So that is the important thing. Huh? Okay, check the derivative of this term. It's a tau is equals to 12v. It's a hy minus y square upon bh cube. So derivative of that term will be 12v bh cube. And this one is yh. So what is the derivative of yh with respect to y is h and what is the derivative of y square is 2y. This term is not equal to 0 so maximum value will occur at y is equals to h by 2. Then you substitute this value of h by 2 back into this equation then you will get the max value. So area is 1 by 2 of 1 by 2 base into height. Tau average is v by a. Tau at neutral axis is 1.33 that is 4 by 3 and tau max is 1.5. Whereas for rectangle, tau neutral axis is same as tau max is equals to 1.5. For triangle, tau neutral axis is different value and tau max is different value. So for circular section, tau max will occur at tau at neutral axis is 1.33 of tau average. So you re remember two number, one is 1.5 and one is 1.33. For triangular, for rectangular section, tau max is same as tau neutral axis, but the value of tau max is 1.5. For circular section, tau max is same as tau neutral axis, but value is 1.33. And for triangular section, tau neutral axis is different and tau max is different, but tau max is 1.5 and the tau at neutral axis is 1.33. And if you have any other section than these three standard, then you develop for your own. Whenever the thickness will change, the value will shoot up suddenly. The shear stress on the top fiber and bottom fiber is always equals to zero. So if for your symmetrical eye section or unsymmetrical eye section, we have the figure is something like this. And for T section, your shear stress distribution will be like this. So we have a symmetrical I section, every dimension is given and we want to calculate the shear stress in the web, not in the flange, at top of the flange, with the top of the flange. So we have a width of flange is 50, 
by 10, depth of wave is 100 by 10 and with this symmetrical so we have same size on the flange. We want to calculate at here exactly at this section. What we are interested we will draw it separately and we will consider this area. So area of this one is uh, this one is 50. So this is 50 by 10. Y bar will be somewhere here. So this is centroid. So this total distance from this point will be 50 plus Y. So Y1 is uh, or Y bar we will say it's a 55. What do you want? So to calculate moment of inertia, we will take the outside rectangle that is equal to 50 by 120 and this hollow portion. So this hollow portion will be 40 by 100. So moment of inertia will be equals to 15 to 120 cube divided by 12 minus 40 into 100 cube divided by 12. It's a hollow section is only applicable for I section. Huh? Do not apply this formula for any other section than this. So this dimension will be equals to this hatch portion is 40 by 100. Really, we want the width of this one. Now since we are in the web, our width will be equals to 10. Now finally use the formula tau equals to V multiplied by area divided by Y bar upon I divided by B. So tau will be equals to 100, 10 to the power 3, area is uh, 500. This one is 5, y bar is 55, i is 3.86, 10 to the power 6 and width is 10. Beam is simply supported, so first of all you have to find out the SFD di SF, uh, SF diagram, then you have to find out BM diagram, then you have to find out maximum shear force, then you have to find out maximum bending stress, then you have to calculate the value of, it's a rectangular section is given. So you can calculate tau average, then you can you calculate tau max. And for bending stress you have to go for the uh, uh, sigma equals to m into y by i formula. Is that correct? Now your beam is 50h and is a simply supported so we have one load acting here we have one reaction at this point we have a point load here and the point load is given as p now this one is p so the reaction will be p by 2 and p by 2 because the figure is symmetrical if the reaction is p by 2 your shear force diagram will be p by 2 up then constant then minus p by 2 and then constant. So at anywhere your maximum shear force will be equals to P by 2. So maximum shear force is P by 2 and maximum value of bending moment is 12.5 pH. The area of rectangle is P by 2 into 25 H so that is maximum rise. This one is positive, this one is negative and for simply supported bending moment on end is always equals to 0 h cube divided by 12 so this is h to the power 4 by 6 y is h by 2 m we have already calculated is 12.5 times p times h this is h by 2 and this one is h to the power 4 by 6 Bending stress is 37.5 P by S square. 
now we'll calculate shear stress so i told you whenever you have to calculate shear stress you have to use what tau average so first of all area area is 2h so what is tau average so tau average will be equals to p upon area area is 2a square one minute one minute one minute what is wrong it's a p by 2 is it correct what is the maximum shear force p by 2 not p so this is p by 4 section tau max is 1.5 of tau average so 1.5 times p divided by 4 s square So this value come out to be 0.375. So tau max by sigma b is 0.375. 0.375 divided by 37.5. Answer is 0 0.01. At a section of a beam, the shear force is F with a 0 BM. The cross section is square with a side equal to A. The point A lies on neutral axis and the point B is on the midway between the neutral axis and the top edge that is the distance of A by 4 above the neutral axis if tau A and tau B denote the shear stress at point A and B then what is the value of tau A by tau B is it a case of pure shear no bending 0 BM so no bending so we have a square section of size A by A we have shown the position of neutral axis and he says that the point A lies on neutral axis. So this one is point A, it lies on neutral axis. There is another point here B. And this distance is given as A by 4. So at point A, tau A is same as tau max, is same as tau neutral axis and each tau neutral axis is same as 1.5 times of tau average. Tau average and tau average will be equals to 1.5 times the force, let's say V and area is A square. To find out the shear stress at B, let's consider this area. So what is the area of this one? So A multiplied by A by 4. Is it A by 4? That equal to A square by 4. The CG of this point is here. How much is CG at this point? So y bar for this section, is it a by 4 plus 1 by 2 of a by 4, correct? So this is a by 4 plus a by 8, that will be 3 by 8 of a. Next job is to calculate b. So width of, what is the width of this one? Is the width equal to a? And now we have a formula here, that is tau equals to f into a multiplied by y bar divided by area divided by i divided by i multiplied by v. Now it's a square section so we can substitute for a to the power 4 by 12. So we are interested in tau A upon tau B. So tau A upon tau B, the final answer is 4 by 3. So choice C is correct choice. So your width is 100 
and the depth is given as 150 so area will be rectangular section is BH that is 1 5 0 0 and one more 0 the concentrated load is W so maximum value of shear force at any section will be W by 2 W by 2 is all of you are agree with W by 2 so we will calculate tau average is tau average is uh, tau max divided by 1 by 2 uh, 1.5 is tau average is tau max divided by 1.5 tau average is equals to w divided by 2 divided by area tau max is given as tau 2 and value of 1.5 so just multiply and calculate w maximum value of shear force come out to be 40 remember one thing if you take the maximum shear stress as W, your answer will be what? 80? Answer will be 80. A rectangular beam of width equal to 100 mm. And height is not known. And the maximum value of shear force is known to us, 60,000. The maximum value of shear stress is given for Newton per mm square. So what we will do, we will calculate tau average equal to tau max and for rectangular section the constant is 1.5, tau max is Vx is Bh equal to tau max multiplied by divided by 1.5 so this is 60,000 100 times h 4 divided by 1.5 so your answer is answer is 2 to 5 so we'll construct first I section we'll locate the neutral axis position so the flange is 50 by 5.5, wave is 109 by 3.5, the entire cross sectional area is given to us, that is 94 into 10 to the power 4 and I is given as 220, 10 to the power 4. So in the given problem, the cross section is wrong. The actual area is 931.5. Moment of inertia is correct. That we have cross check is 220. Now what about the shear stress distribution? Is it like this? The shear stress distribution will be like this. First we are like this. Then it become a straight line here. Because of wave, it bounces off. And then we have max value at neutral axis. Where is the neutral axis? At what distance we have a neutral axis from this point? 109 divided by 2. 54.5. And one point is A. So what is the tau at A is here? Correct? This point is B. This point is C. And this point is D. Now what is the difference between B and C? The point B is in the flange and C is in the web. That is the difference. So what we are interested? Are you interested in tau C? And are you interested tau at D? Tau at uh, neutral axis, no? That is uh, tau at D and tau at C. Agree? To calculate tau at C, we will consider this area. So what is the area for this one? The area for this one is 50 multiplied by 5.5. 5. 
the y bar for this section y bar of this area y bar of this area is 54.5 54.5 plus 5.5 divided by 2 and then what you require is a width so width we are calculating at point C so width will be equals to 3.5 and the force is already given to you is 20 kilo Newton 20 into 10 to the power 3 I we already calculated. Now substitute the formula. Now use the formula and calculate the axis. I have to consider this area as well as this area also. Is it correct? So I have two area. But I already have a calculation for first area. So I will call this area equal to A1 and this area equal to A2. So we require two area. One is A1 and one is A2. It's a composite figure now. So what is A1? A1 is same as 50 into 5.5. And what is Y1? What is the Y1? What is the, this uh, this distance from this point to neutral axis? Is it same? That is what? 54.5. plus 5.5 divided by 2 and now we will calculate its second area that is the second area is A2 what is the size of that area is that height is 54.5 is the height of this area is 54.5 and what is the width of this one 3.5 and what is Y2 for this Y2 for this one is it 54.5 divided by 2 So to calculate y bar, I have to use the equation. First of all, I will calculate area. So area for this section is A1 plus A2. Then I need to calculate y bar. So this is a composite figure, so I will use A1 y1 plus A2 y2 upon A. And what about the width? So width is same as 3.5. Now Calculate all this value and find out the shear stress at point B. So, all of you confirm this. Area is 465.75, y bar is 44.96. We have same value of force, width is 3.5. Now calculate the shear stress at neutral axis that is at point B. Are you getting 54.38? square section with diagonal of 60 by 60 diagonal is 60 by 60 vertical and horizontal the shear force at a particular section is 5 what is the shear stress at layer AB we want to find out what is the shear stress on this layer AB so we want to calculate what is the area above this the centroid of this is it correct is the neutral axis is at point CD so neutral axis is at point CD now we require certain geometrical condition to calculate the base at this point. Okay, we have a same figure here. I have taken this equal to AC, this equal to BC. But I am only interested on the half side. So this one is th uh, 30. And this one is 15, this one is 15. So is this value must equal to 15? Because of symmetry? Or is 7.5? So from symmetry triangle we can write AC divided by 30 that is this length divided by this length upon this side divided by total height. So AC come out to be 15. If AC is 15 then value of AB will be equals to 30. The CG from the base is 5 mm because this one is 15 H by 3 from the base. 2h by 3 from the apex. So, and the distance of neutral axis from, from CD is 15. So, 15 plus 5 is 20. Width at this section is 30. What we need is only area now. 
the area of this portion that is this complete triangle is 1 by 2 base is 30 height is 15 that equal to 2 to 5 so shear force is known to us that equal to 5000 width is gone width is known y bar is known area is known now what we required is i so i for circular section with a diagonal horizontal or diagonal inclined it doesn't matter a4 into the power 4 by 12 now can you give me value of a the diagonal is 60 so what is the value of a the size of the this size is 60 so this one is what this is 30 this one is also 30 so what we are calling this one as a dimension so by pythagoras this is uh, 30 root 2 correct so this is 30 root 2 to the power 4 by 12 and finally use a standard formula that is tau equals to v multiplied by area multiplied by y bar divided by i divided by b substitute everything the final answer is 2.7 megapascal this is the shear stress at ab do not apply the formula of tau average and tau max that is not true so there is a udl here so let's show udl the value of udl is w is 0.75 kilo newton per meter remember it is acting in the downward direction and the weight is acting in the upward direction now since we are interested only at a i will consider here the section what is the sign convention for right hand side section is downward is positive correct and clockwise is what negative that is anti clockwise is what positive correct now since i am interested only at bending moment so what is the bending moment of 20 above point a is it anti clockwise and is it 20 multiplied by 2 and this udl from this point to this point is that udl will make a clockwise moment from udl from this point to this point will it make it clockwise moment this uh, udl will act here and it will make clockwise moment so this will equals to minus 20 multiplied by 2 and is this point load will act distance of 2 by 2 oh hey, just a minute the UDL is not 20, UDL is 0.75. So, how much the moment is above the point A is 38.5. Next job is to calculate Y. Y is 400 by 2. That equal to 200. Next job is to calculate I. Is BH cube by 12. 300 multiplied by 400 cube divided by 12 and finally sigma at point a sigma at point a will it tensile or is it compressive will this will bend like this is it correct it will bend like this is a bending portion is correct so is it compressive or is it tensile so this will be compressive in nature and you can calculate this value using m multiplied by i divided by y so the bending stress this time is 4.81 megapascal and its compression